What is going on everybody? Weedle Twinneedle here, and we are back again with an Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon Wi-Fi battle, and this one's gonna be an overused tier battle. Hooray! As you can see by my team. And I oh yeah, yeah, here we go. Kartana, Landorus, and Karen Black using overused Pokemon in the overused tier. Bad, you're you're bad, bad, you're 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 bad, you are bad 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 you but without further ado, let's get right into this overuse tier battle against Tyler, because even though it was an overuse tier battle, if I recall correctly, this battle's pretty entertaining, so hopefully you guys enjoy this battle. So, my opponent's gonna be leading up with the Bow Landorus, the Landorus THICK, as I decide to lead off with my boss of gym. So, of course, he's gonna lead off with Landorus T, because that is how you overuse. You just lead off with Landorus T and go from there. So, my Mega Hair Cross did get intimidated, which kind of sucks, but since my opponent's only stealth rocker is Landorus T, I felt pretty safe just staying in here turn one, not fearful of Flying MZ turn one, because let's be real. What do all OU players click turn one? That's right, these stealth rocks. My opponent's gonna go for stealth rocks turn one. As I just go for my own rock move, I go for rock blast just to gauge the damage on the Landorus T. And as you can see here, the Landorus T takes a little more damage than I was expecting because normally Landorus T's are like bulky, but on this sort of team, he looks to be like an offensively suicidal lead Landorus T. So just to scout for it, I go for Protect on the off chance he carries this move I'm thinking of as he does carry the explosion. Pretty. So we're able to bait out the explosion with Mega Heracross. And Mega Heracross is a tank, so it probably would have lived it. But the fact we're able to protect ourselves from the explosion just gave you some Gen 4 flashback. So down goes Landorus Thick, which is very nice for us. However, the next threat comes out, Tapu Lele. And Tapu Lele, like I mentioned in that team preview, my psychic resistance is Kartana. So I can't really switch into this Tapu Lele, and I need to keep my Mega Heracross alive just because of the theme behind this team. So I'm going to bring in my Discord server, my Regigigas to pivot into Psychic and scout out what set the Tapu Lele is, because based on the damage he deals to uh, Regigigas, I'll be able to see what set he's running. So he's going to go for Psychic here, and it does knock me into red, which tells me he's either Life Orb or Choice Specs. We're going to eject button out because that's the only way my Regigigas can be useful on this team and we're going to bring out my skill yourself my kartana a very fitting nickname for kartana so i know the top of Lele is not scarf and even if he was i'd be able to outspeed because i'm also scarf kartana so i'm actually going to pull a double into my a i'm expecting either the halucha or the unvictini to come out because if he brings in halucha i can fake that out and if he brings in victini which he does bring in victini i can actually hit this victini with a beat up that is right, we have beat up on this team because that was the entire idea behind this team and this video is to make beat up deal as much damage as possible and beat up annihilates Victini. Now, if you guys are curious on how beat up does so much damage, I'll get into how beat up's damage is calculated after this battle, but interrupting the battle halfway through seems a little uh, counterproductive, so I'm not gonna do that. But now he's gonna bring in threat number two, the Halucha, and he got the Psychic Seed. The Rock Hawk is in here. I believe that's a Paper Mario reference. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure that's a Paper Mario to Thousand Year Door reference, and that's a pretty underrated game. I recommend if you guys haven't played that game, you should play it because it's hella hype. But I'm gonna bring in Landers T, my OE Daddy. Daddy! Is the Halucha going to go for a sword stance? I'm like, this Pokemon is a threat. However, I am equipped to handle this Halucha because even though he's gonna hit me with a plus one acrobatics, Landorus T is very, very thick. Even though I'm not really invested that bulky, I'm able to live, go for the regular fly, not no Z fly. I'm regular fly on my Landorus. Now, the reason behind that I'm not Z fly instead of uh, a power herb fly, ignore my dog there, is because my Amy Pum is the Z mover on this team. So I don't wanna run two Z moves because I wanna make sure Amy Pum can go for my Z move because like I mentioned, the entire idea behind this team was to make beat up deal as much damage as possible. So that's what we're going to do, okay? Now here, this play is 300 IQ because I could have sacked off my Landorus T there and been fine because I didn't need Landorus T for anything else. However, my Discord server is able to live Stealth Ox and we're able to live and Mega Alakazam is obviously Mega Alakazam because you can't Mega Evolve with anything else on this team. And Mega 
Alakazam's like top three megas in OU right now. So he's gonna Mega Evolve with Mega Alakazam and Trey's my slow start. Little Spoon is going to get Big Spoon by my Reg Giga. So I'll make sure to make that a thing in my thumbnail. Don't you worry. So Mega Alakazam is gonna go for the Psychic and just knock out my Reg Giga. However, he traced my slow start. So this fast Mega Alakazam is now like average speed stat at best. So my A Pump can come in here. I would speed the Mega Alakazam and I'm able to fire off another beat up if I want to. So I'm expecting my opponent to either switch out or just stack off Mega Alakazam. Though I doubt he'd stack off Mega Alakazam considering he has Tapu Lele still. That stabs Psychic with lack of Psychic Resistance as a very strong against my team. So I was pretty sure he's going to switch out there. He brings me in this Tapu Lele expecting Fake Out. However, I go for my Z move here. You guys are probably thinking I'm going to go for like Breakneck Blitz or something. But no, we're going to increase our attack stat thanks to my Z move. And we're going to go for the Z Laser Focus because like I mentioned earlier, I want to beat up to deal as much damage as possible. And yes, guys, laser focus does work on multi-hitting moves like Rock Blast and like beat up. So my opponent's going to bring out his Kartana expecting him to like take nothing. But this beat up, guys, it's five guaranteed crits, not six because uh, my Landers T's fainted or not Landers T, my Regigigas is fainted, but beat up hits five times here and unfortunately Kartana is able to live because it does have the Ferrothorn level defense that however he's not actually Scarf Kartana I'm not too sure what Kartana said he's running maybe he's not Scarf on this team because he has Mega Alakazam and Halucha both are very fast Pokemon in their own right so I guess you don't really need a Scarf Pokemon since Halucha is a pretty good speed control in general so we're able to knock out the Kartana's in comes the Mega Alakazam traces my technician so that's pretty scary if he has like a hidden power but I'm pretty sure he's just focused Blast Shadow Ball Psychic and Recover slash combined but i'm gonna bring in my OU daddy here as death fodder though i didn't really need ambipon for anything else in this game because he, all he has left is a uh, mega zam and tapu lele um i figured i keep ambipon alive because i don't want to let my ambipon die ass we Pokemon can would be so ashamed of me if i let ambipon die so down goes my landier's fairy in form and now i'm gonna bring in skill yourself my kartana now kartana is gonna do what his nickname says and is going to just choice scarf leaf play all over my opponent and uh it's gonna be able to outspeed mega alakazam because of the choice scarf down goes mega alakazam and uh we're gonna get a bait boost in our attack and my opponent's last is going to be Tabu Lele and even, even if he was Choice Scarf which I doubt he was because of the damage he did to Regigigas a Scarf Fleet played should seal the deal and knock out my opponent so that was a pretty good showcasing of uh, Ambipom's beat up it didn't do as much as I wanted it to do but it still got like nearly two kills and Ambipom getting two kills in OU is pretty impressive so down goes Tabu Lele to Leaf Blade and we're able to defeat Tyler with a Four of victory I believe so it wasn't the closest battle in the world but I still enjoyed it nonetheless now before we get into this next battle I'm going to explain how the beat up damage is calculated because I'm pretty sure some of you guys are curious on how it works so let's just get into the explanation so how is beat up's base damage calculated? It's actually pretty simple of how beat up works it's just not many people know about this because everyone's so used to seeing beat up justified and VGC as opposed to just beat up actually dealing damage on its own. So the base power of beat up is the party member's base attack divided by 10 plus five. Now I understand math can be very confusing. So I'll make this a little easier to understand on Pokemon Showdown. So let's take a look at Kartana. Now Kartana has a base attack of 181 and the attack stat itself is 507 at level 100. Now the fact that my Pokemon are level 100 in this video are very important because the base damage is on is relying on the base stat itself. So if you're at level 50, you're going to have effectively half the attack stat, which means beat up will deal half the damage, which is very, very important, which is why all of the battles in this video are at level 100. I figure I would just mention that now. So there's no confusion later. Now, how is this damage exactly calculated? So we have Kartana's attack, which is 507. You divide that by 10, which gives you a 50.7 base power attack. But however, Pokemon rounds down all decimals, so it only be a 50. It only be 50 as opposed to 50.7. It doesn't round up decimals; it always rounds down. And then you would add five to that, which gives you a 55 base power beat up off of Kartana, which is pretty impressive. However, that is not the end of that because Ambipom's ability being Technician makes the Pokemon's moves of 60 base power or less have a 1.5 times multiplier added on top of that. So this 55 would actually be 82.5, but since Pokemon always rounds down decimals, it's only an 82 
base power attack, but it's still very impressive. 82 base power just off of Kartana alone is pretty impressive. And the rest of my Pokemon's attack stats are actually divisible by 10, just so there's not any leftover decimals, and so I can use the uh, other EVs and more efficient stats, like in Kieran Black, I'm running Mix, so I have 28 in special attack. Lander's T, I have a lot of HP and, and you know, speed investment, so I'm not like super slow or anything. And then Regigigas, a really cool part about Regigigas is that slow start isn't taken into account when beat at space damage is calculated, because it's reliant on the stat itself, not on the stat after slow start. So that is why Regigigas actually fits pretty well on this team because its attack stat is really big and it's also very tanky so it can be used as a pivot and for support which is why I have Regigigas on this team also for a meme of course because I didn't want to use all super top tier threats. Now I'm going to actually fill in the remainder of these uh, Pokemon and just show you how much damage beat up actually does. Alrighty, as you can see, we have 84 in Mega Heracross, 64 in Landorus. Now, Landorus T could be a lot more. I could run Adamant, but I just decided that I wanted Jolly just so I can outspeed certain threats in the OU tier. 76 on Regigigas, 51 on Ambipom because it's kind of weak, and then 79 on Kieran Black. You add this all together and you get a 436 base power beat up, which is absolutely ridiculous because that's stronger than Explosion. That's like one of the strongest moves in the game right there. And it's all thanks to the Technician ability, making all of that beat up do 1.5 times damage. So it just does so much more damage than you actually expect. So that's pretty cool. And it's a nice showcasing an Amy Palm doing something a little bit different. But let's now try a beat up on a Pokemon that's a little more viable than Amy Palm. Weavile gets Stab on beat up and it has a higher attack stat, so beat up does, e does even more damage. And you still get the 1.5 times multiplier because of Stab. So yeah, it's pretty damn strong without Technician. And now we're going to try it out on Weavile. Alrighty, my second opponent today is Dweeby Weave, another person I battle off of Discord. My opponent is packing a sticky web based team. Judging by the looks of it, he has the Hazard Removal Core or Hazard Protection Core and Bisharp and Mimikyu, and then he has a Smeargle, so I'm assuming it's a web based team. As I'm packing the same team as I used in the recent battle, but I am using Weavile over Ambipom. And we're also leading off with it because we we're anticipating the Smeargle lead because he wants to get off those hazards ASAP. So if we can prevent that, that reduces the power of these teams significantly so we're gonna try to prevent the webs from being set up on my side of the field so my opponent's gonna lead off with the smeargle as i'm gonna lead off my just weavile my weavile <laughs> so yeah pretty redundant nickname there but it's named after my homie jack shout outs to jack aka just weavile he's a pretty good friend of mine so i'm gonna go for a beat up here because if we can prevent the entry hazards if possible we will do that we're gonna get rid of smeargle turn one prevent the entry hazards which is amazing for me and now my opponent's gonna be forced to bring in bisharp here because he doesn't really have a switch to Banded beat up because it just does so much damage. So now I'm going to switch out my Just Weavile. I'm pretty sure Banded Weavile out damages a Technician Ambipom by a decent amount. So yeah, I would recommend you run Banded on Ambipom if you're going to use it with Ambipom, but I wanted to use Laser Focus to get those beat up crits as well, which Weavile cannot do. So that is why I have that on this team. So I'm going to switch out my Skill Yourself here, expecting my opponent to uh, bring in the Mega Pinsir. So I bring in my Boss of Gym. may seem like a very questionable play, and it is very questionable because Mega Pinsir definitely beats Mega Heracross 1v1. However, I know my opponent is not brave enough to set up Sword Stance in my face because if he is, he is suicidal because Mega Heracrosses commonly carry the Rock Blast, which will annihilate Mega Pinsir. So Mega Pinsir will Mega Evolve, and Boss of Gym will also Mega Evolve because Mega Heracross is just a beast. I love Mega Heracross. It's one of my favorite Megas, even though it's kind of ugly, but like I love ugly. I love ugly and attractive Pokemon all in the same. I'm gonna protect here because I know my opponent's not gonna Sword Dance in my face. If he does, he is crazy, but thankfully my opponent just goes for frustration. And now I'm gonna take the opportunity to switch out of my Heracross and bring in Regigigas, knowing my opponent is not gonna Sword Dance, because if he does, he is insane. If you SD in front of a Mega Heracross, you are insane. So my opponent's gonna go for frustration here, and Regigigas actually tanks it reasonably well, and now we're going to eject button out, because that's Regigigas' only purpose on my team is to be used as a pivot so I can safely bring in just Weavile yet again. And now I can just click beat up because I'm pretty sure beat up now that Mega Heracross is Mega Evolved, will easily knock out the Mega Pinsir. So my opponent's going to switch out a Mega Pinsir and bring out the Bisharp. And Bisharp is a Dark Resistance, right? However, beat up. 
easy to a KO. <laughs> this is not a dark resistance. That would have gotten to a shot at anyways without life orb damage. And now my opponent's going to be forced to sucker punch because, well, he really can't do anything else. So he sucker punches. And now we're going to just beat up again and knock out the Bisharp. So down goes Bisharp to beat up. Weavile is so absurdly powerful with that banded beat up. It gets KOs that it should definitely not get. That is for sure. So down goes Bisharp. And now my opponent's going to bring out his Greninja. And I could actually stay in here and do like over half to Greninja because I am faster than Ash Greninja before it Maggie Evolves. But on the off chance, he is Scarf Protean or just Ash Greninja in general. I don't want to give him that free kill because Ash Greninja is fair and balanced. It is S rank for a reason. So I'm going to bring out my Kieran Black here as he reveals to be Ash Greninja because he does not um, turn into Protean form and turn into Water type. So he just stays in regular form. Surf does a bunch of damage because he expects Ash Greninja. He does not trust Hydro Pump. Neither do I, to be honest. Hydro Pump is one of those moves that always misses for me and my opponents too there is some battles i have where hydro pump just misses like five times in a row and that just be what it be man so i'm gonna earth power here expecting magazine to come in it was kind of like an odd flex play but i had no reason not to click earth power there so down goes the magazine to the earth power and now my opponent's gonna bring in mimic you so i'm thinking to myself you know, Kieran Black has Terrible, so there's no way he sword stances right in front of a Kieran Black. So I'm going to switch into my OU Daddy here, expecting my opponent to want to go for play rough. Then my opponent sword stances on a Kieran Black, and I'm like, bro, I have Terrible. What are you doing? But he does not care. He just, you know, goes for a sword stance. And now he's going to go for the Mimikyu Z move, which I have to cut out. Otherwise, game freak will send me to the Shadow Realm. Night, <laughs> oh. So Landers T gets snuggled forever and just dies. So down goes my Landers T and my OU Daddy. So now beat up space damage only hits or beat up only hits five times because one of my mons are fainted. If any of your mons are status or fainted on um, beat ups, their beat up won't work. Which is something I should have mentioned in the previous battle, but I did not. So I'm going to use B up here. It's only going to hit five times, but that does not matter because Mimikyu's uh, disguise will not save it. I believe that's Totem Mimikyu as well because it's kind of big. The beat up's going to hit four more times, and that will be enough thanks to Mega Heracross and Kartana there. You can see the beat up base damage fluctuation between like Mega Heracross and like uh, other mines on my team like Red Gigas and Kieran Black. So now in comes the Mega Pinsir. And uh, I was, I'm was i just going to stay in here because Quick Attack will not knock me out. I don't want to give him a free Sword Stance because if he goes for Sword Stance and then Stance Quick Attack, it's pretty much a loss. But Beat Up does so much damage. Oh my lord. We got a crit there. If I had six Pokemon there, he would have definitely died. But unfortunately, we do not. So I'm going to be forced to save my Weavile here so I can safely Ice Shard the Mega Pinsir. I'm going to sack off my Regigigas here, hoping he doesn't go for Sword Stance in my face. But even if he does, Weavile does outspeed thanks to Ice Shard and we'll be able to revenge kill it. So he goes for quick attack, does not knock out my Regigigas. Enough frustration will indeed knock out the Regigigas. So down goes Regigigas, excuse me. That was very unladylike of me. And now I'm going to bring in Skill Yourself, the Scarf Kartana. And Scarf Kartana is about to do what Kartana does best and outskill all over the opponents. My opponents on the quick attack and do zero damage and Scarf Fleet Blade will knock out the uh, Mega Pinsir. And my opponent's last? I forgot my opponent's last is. I honestly forgot what it was. But I'm pretty sure it gets knocked out by Leaf Blade because Kartana is fair and balanced. And my opponent's last is Greninja. And he actually could potentially knock me out with Water Shuriken because Water Shuriken hits really, really hard on Kartana's special side. But unfortunately for my opponent, he only hits twice as opposed to three to five times. And now Kartana will knock out the Ash Greninja with the Leaf Blade. So down goes Ash Greninja. You got outskilled by Kartana. How does it feel, bitch? We're able to defeat Dweeby Weep thanks to skillful Kartana and Weavile. So that was a pretty good showing of Banded Weavile. We actually did so much work with Choice Banded beat up Weavile in that battle. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that beat up showcasing. However, we're still not done yet. I thought to myself, I wonder if there's a way we can make beat up deal even more damage because we had Technician beat up and Dark type beat up. But I was like, what if there was a way to combine Dark type and Technician beat up? And sadly, there's no Dark types that get Technician but also learn beat up. However, there's a Pokemon that I'm actually pretty fond of, a Alolan Persian, which does have Technician and a move called Assist. So voila, we have this awful team. I'm using 
Uh, all physical attackers under the constraints of assist teams, meaning I have to use moves that cannot be drawn by assist. So yeah, this team is probably one of the worst teams I think I've ever used. And my opponent actually has a really good team for me to deal with. He has Girder and Mawile, which give, you know, a mono beat up team some pretty big difficulty. So let's just get into this battle against Donovan because this battle is really entertaining and hopefully you guys enjoy this PU battle. So my opponent's gonna lead off with the Spark Doggo. The Manette trick is I decide to lead off with my Chris Brown, my Prime. Because Prime does have beat up, that's who we are assisting beat up off of. So Chris Brown just beats women up. So that is why we have Chris Brown with beat up. And uh, yeah, it's pretty fitting. So I'm going to pull a hard switch into my butt plug, expecting the electric type attack for the Manette trick. As my opponent does go for Volt Switch. So our butt plug is now nice and charged up thanks to the Volt Switch. So now we can use our butt plug to its full usage tonight, which is very nice for us. But now my opponent's gonna bring in the Dream On, the Musharna, and I'm just like, you Dream On, you're about to catch this metronome, and now are we gonna get Bolt Strike, are we gonna get Fissure, which one are we gonna get? But we're gonna get Surf, sadly, because Electivire is trying to surf his way up to the higher variabilities in the PU tier, but unfortunately, the Smoke on Bible says you are untiered trash, Electivire. You are untiered garbage. Your days of overused are over. Gen 4 was like 10 years ago, Electivire. Gen 7 is now. Well, actually, Gen 7 was like three years ago, but like, hey, we're still playing it now. So, yeah, my opponent's gonna go for Trick Room here, and um, I have to just destroy this thing with a little incursion because my opponent thinks I'm gonna go for a knockoff or foul play or U turn like normies, and my opponent. You're facing Weedle Twin Needle. You already know we're gonna go for some shenanigans right now. We're gonna go for the assist here, and we're gonna go for that assist. Technician stab beat up and this Mushana is gonna get annihilated. He's gonna activate his weakness policy <laughs> There is a weakness policy in this video, but um, yeah, it doesn't even matter cuz all we need is forehead So down goes Mushana technician stab beat up now keep in mind a load inversion has 240 attack max level 100 So the fact beat up can still do that amount of damage just shows how strong technician stab beat up truly is now, in comes Spark Doggo here, and I'm just like, I'm adamant Persian. I can underspeed you in Trick Rooms. I'm just going to beat up again. But then my opponent knew that, and he's going to bring in his absolutely his absolute. And I'm just like, oh, he abated me and outsmarted me. I'm a siren. Because Absol has an ability known as Justify into all of you Terracot users in VGC. You all already know when you beat up a Justified Pokemon, they get a bunch of attack boosts. But since we actually have six Pokemon, we're going to give this Absol plus six attack. But at what cost? Look at this damage from this beat up. We are getting some crits in the mix because when you hit six times, you're just bound to crit. I can't believe you crit me with beat up. A multi-hitting me. That's the only reason why you won. Okay, but like real talk, no one actually said that to me on Wi-Fi. But people on Showdown, man, people on Showdown, as you've seen from my videos, they get really mad. <laughs> I don't know why, it's just Pokemon. Yeah, so we use beat up and we nearly knock out Absol, but we don't knock out Absol, so now we have to sack something because Trick Room is up. And I was gonna like bait the Sucker Punch with my assist, but then I'm like, wait, Trick Room is up, I'm gonna get knocked out by Superpower or like knock off. So I'm gonna sack off my Electivire here because Electivire is untier trash. So down goes my Bout Plug. Um, we can just use our Dolo we're gonna use in the next battle. So it's not too big of a deal. Down goes our Butt Plug. And um, yeah, it's not too big of a deal. And I'm not joking about that. We do have a Pokemon called Dildo in the next battle because I'm basically Hayden. I'm basically Hayden, so with my nicknames. But now I'm gonna bring in my Discord server here. And I know my opponent's gonna go for Sucker Punch because he's gonna think like, oh, he's gonna underspeed me thanks to Trick Room. But you know, already know we have that Nature Power Try Attack because I'm actually Max Attack, Max Special Attack, Reggie Gigas. Because I needed Beat Up to deal damage, but I also needed a Special Attacker. So <laughs> voila, we have Nature Power Reggie. She goes. And now my opponent's gonna bring in the Rudolph, the Girder, and I'm just like, oh, <laughs> this Pokemon 6 owes me. So my best bet of dealing with this Girder is to Nature Power, Tri Attack, Freeze it. So we're gonna go for the Tri Attack here. Pray to God we get the Freeze Hacks, and unfortunately we do not. So now we're gonna automatically lose to Girder. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed, leave a like. But we're gonna live the Drain Punch just barely with 19 HP. It's gonna heal all of that health back, but now, we're gonna activate our eject button. <laughs> you just got abated. Get shit on, kid. But now I'm gonna bring in Beer Belly. Now, the only way I don't lose is if he attacks me now, and thankfully, he drain punches me, as we're gonna be able to live at 100 flat HP, just 100 HP. And now we're gonna eat our Ayapapa beer, because slacking is our Ayapapa, especially after this play. We're gonna go for the counter, just freaking. 
Boom! <laughs> right in the face. And down goes Rudolph the Broken Girder. So down goes Girder. Sadly, Girder is not banned from PU. Logan got banned from PU though, which is very, very nice. Now in comes the Swana. Now I'm just like, I have True on so I can't stay in right now. So I'm going to pull a hard switch into my Meow Max, expecting my opponent to go for like, actually it was a bad play in hindsight because he could have just knocked me out with like Fly MZ, but like I wasn't thinking about that. But we're able to live liquidation and now we're going to assist beat up this thing to death. However, my opponent does have a very safe switch into this. He's going to bring in his Nibbler here, his Maw Wild. And I was thinking this was like Sheer Force Maw Wild, but sadly it is Intimidate, a bulky ass Maw Wild. So this is literally one of the hardest counters to beat up you can possibly have in PU because you are Fairy type, you have Intimidate, and so this beat up only hits five times because my uh, Regigigas is dead. So, um, which it's actually not dead yet. Um, Butt Plug's dead. Regigigas is almost dead, but um, yeah, never mind. I'm stupid, but beat up still does a really sizable amount of damage because of the fact that this technician stab and it's like I don't know the exact number I'll, I'm sure I'll figure it out Holy But yeah, it's still really 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 strong and um, this mobile is probably max defense max HP But it still gets like four hit KO'd by this beat up which is still ridiculous to think about because my alone Persian Like I said barely has like two it has 240 attack with Adam H at level 100 so the fact it can do this much damage is just goes to show how strong technician stab beat up truly is and if something like we vile got technician this would be really strong i would think this would be viable and overuse like an actual viable strat and overuse not just a meme but sadly the best you can do is stab beat up um technician stab beat up just seems to be like a luxury you can't actually get it unless you use assist so um yeah, this is like the only way you can get technician stab beat up and let's do some like double shenanigans but like that's impossible because battles are double battles are 44 so like yeah it's not gonna happen but now i'm gonna bring in my chris brown the only other violent pokemon on my team because we do have the z focus punch because a lone persian or not a lone persian um prime does get focus punch so we're gonna hit this guy with a all out pummeling i kind of wish i was able to land this on the mawile before i had to beat up with the lone persian but it's not too big of a deal we're gonna go for the all out pummeling versus this um, Mawile and just knock them out. So down goes the Nibbler, so my opponent's Girder's dead, my opponent's Mawile's dead. So finally, a little Persian can actually do something in this battle, which is very nice for us. But now my opponent's gonna bring in the Odet here, the Swana, and since I'm not Choice Guard Prime, this thing will be able to outspeed me. And now he's gonna hit me up with his own Z move. He actually does have the Fly MZ, so I had the intuition on point there, but I still was pretty ballsy with my switching into my little Persian against the Swana play, but uh, he's actually gonna have Z Mirror move, which was wasn't what I was expecting. I was expecting Super Sonic Sky Strike, but he actually just hits me up with Z Mirror, move, which actually gives you plus two attack. So we're gonna hit him with the beat up, which isn't technician or stab boosted, so it does zero damage. Just swan and you only have four mods up, so it does even less damage. And that liquidation will knock me out at plus two attack. So down goes my Chris Brown, and I'm just like, okay. We're not going to lose to Swana because I'm going to bring in my Meowmix here and I can just knock this thing out with a foul play because my alone person also carries foul play on the set. So I'm going to go for foul play here. However, my opponent has the Aqua Jet and that will just knock me out. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> Down goes my alone person and I'm just like, wait a minute. Is this Swana going to annihilate me? Because I'm going to bring in Slacking and I'm like, okay, Slacking, you lived a plus one Gritter Drain Punch. You can live a plus two Bravery. I believe in you, Slacking. We can do this. We can do this, Dad. Slacking is my new dad, by the way. I know Incineroar and Landers T were my dads originally, but Slacking is my new dad. However, Beer Belly just couldn't do it. Slacking is going to go down, and um, I'm going to bring in my last, which is Jimmy Nutrin, my Rampardos. Now, this Rampardos is actually Assault Vest. I was taking my Assault Vest Rampardos for the damn Manetra because I do have Dig, and we could have just knocked him out. But no, I'm going to go for the Focus Sponge just to reveal I have it as we're going to get knocked out by Liquidation. And sadly, we are going to lose to Z, Mirror, Move, Swana. And I really wanted to win with this meme assist beat up team. I really wanted to, but unfortunately, we just couldn't do it and we're going to lose to Donovan. So, I mean, we did our best with assist beat up. My opponent played really, really well though. And I really did try my best considering my opponent had like Girder and the fact we were able to get past Girder was just a feat beyond itself with this team because my team gets six out by Girder. <laughs> Especially since it was an assist team, I got past Girder, so like, that was a victory in itself. And then my opponent, like, had justified Absol that we beat up into, so I felt like I had to showcase this battle. I know PokéZubers don't post losses, but, like, you aren't gonna win with assist beat up anyway, so I felt like I got the best battle I was gonna get with this battle right here. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this battle. However, we are still not done yet. 
I thought to myself, is there any other ways I can make beat up deal more damage? Because despite the fact we had a load in Persian do technician stab beat up, which is definitely like the most amount of damage you can do with just beat up space power alone, a load in Persian's attack stat had me feeling like unfulfilled with the beat up strategy. So I thought to myself, is there any other ways I can make beat up deal more damage? Haha, <laughs> <laughs> nice voice crack. So we have a doubles battle versus a passerby, because I can't do level 166 L battles on Battle Spot, and I wasn't gonna like look through my dead Discord server asking for someone to double battle Ubers me, so I just challenged random festival plaza people like how I used to battle back in Auras, just trying to get trying to get a level 100 doubles uber battle <laughs> against someone who's actually competent. So we do have this passerby. He may be thinking he's an innocent uber user, but he is not innocent. Slight spoilers, he does have Power Herb Geomancy Xerneas. And there's no innocent Power Herb Geomancy Xerneas users. These Xerneas players need to be taught a lesson. My opponent is not innocent. My opponent's packing a very scary team though. He has Zera Aura, Xerneas, Kyogre, Groundon, Rayquaza, and Magirna. So overall, a very threatening team. And as you can see by my team, we also have a threatening team. We're also packing Mega Mewtwo X, who does have the highest attack stat in the game. We also have Hitmontop and Houndoom, which may seem sort of questionable to have on this team, but it will make sense once the battle starts. And then we also have Yavolto, who increases beat up base damage just because of Dark Aura, and it has a pretty high attack stat. I think it has like base 131, which is still pretty impressive. It's not the highest, but it's not the lowest either, so it's pretty nice to have on this team, though we could have picked better Pokemon for sure. And then we have Kartana and Deoxys attack form, because their attack stats are pretty much the same at over 500. So that is our team for this final battle. Now, without further ado, let's Let's get into this final battle against this passerby. So my opponent actually has a pretty threatening team. I'm 99% sure my opponent has EV trained Pokemon, so I don't feel that bad posting this battle against my opponent. And like I said, he did have Power Herb, Geomancy, Xerneas, so I don't feel bad about this battle. Okay, so he leaves off with Zer Aura and Xerneas. As I decided to leave off my Tail Dildo and my Sloppy Top and my Mewtwo and my Hitmon Top, I told you guys I was bringing a Dildo in this battle. Y'all probably think I was lying, but here we are. We got Tail Dildo with a lowercase L instead of an I to get around the filter. Genius nicknaming skills on wheels when needles behalf so going to Mega evolve my Mega to x turn one and my opponent's lead actually looks like a competitive vgc lead but i'm pretty sure my opponent's team was meant for single battling as opposed to double battling just because like i challenged him to doubles and i don't know but he's gonna fake out with the normal gem i'm gonna go for fake out into xerneas because the xerneas is a huge threat we're, um, we're going to get a stat fist boost thanks to my opponent's fake out which i actually forgot about and i'm just realizing this now in the replay so whoopsies but yeah i'm gonna go for the mock punch into the zero aura do a very nice chunk of damage and now i'm gonna go for poison jab into the xerneas thing and it will knock him out pretty easily however the xerneas is able to live because xerneas is probably defensively invested as now he's gonna go for the acrobatics into my mega v2x but we're able to tank it reasonably well because it's unstabbed and zero aura doesn't have the highest attack set in the world and now xerneas is gonna click geomancy and there it is guys my opponent does not deserve any mercy if you're using geomancy xerneas you don't get any mercy from wheels when you know i'm the victim here not my opponent so he's go he goes for the geomancy here gets all those boosties which is kind of scary however i'm not too afraid of this thing because i do have the mock punch on my hip on top and i do believe the xerneas is in range of that so mock punch will knock out the xerneas so down goes that mass threat to my team and uh, now i'm gonna go for a drain punch into zero aura and since i'm adamant max attack this zero aura is going to die no matter what because Mega Mewtwo X has the highest attack stat in the game so of course it's gonna die so down goes their aura and Xerneas on turn two which is very nice for us as now my opponent's done messing around he's gonna bring in his ground on here his uh, primal ground on and he's gonna bring in the primal Kyogre which is uh, they're both shiny of course both legit shiny just like my opponent Xerneas as well he's going to primal evolve yeah primal evolve into the ground on first which means the rain's going to be on my opponent's side of the field as opposed to the sun because primal kyogre still needs to primal evolve and primal ground on and primal kyogre is um, me not mega on um, primal evolutions look so much better shiny than their regular forms i think on um, both forms look better in regular i don't think primal kyogre or primal ground on 
looks good shiny, but like I think their blue and red looks a lot better than the black. But that's just my personal opinion. So finally, I got. <laughs> I just said all that just to kill the time of primal reverting because it takes like 30 seconds each. So yeah, I'm sorry for wasting a minute of time there. Not my fault. They brought the primals. I'm going to switch out my Mewtwo here, expecting my opponent to go for um Origin Pulse, Water Spout, Precipice Blades, those sort of moves because I think he's going to try to overwhelm me with spread damage here. So I go for the wide guard, hoping he does go for those moves. As he does go for Precipice Blades, which is really good. I know he can't go for a fire type move with ground down because of the rain and now he's gonna go for origin pull so thanks to wide guard a fairly balanced move indeed we're able to protect protect ourselves from the uh spread attacks which is very nice and now we're gonna go for wide guard again so i'm like well i don't know what the best move he has to hit me is probably thunder and the primal ground down can't do his stab moves in the rain so i'm just gonna go for role play here and to hit my top I actually get technician because if you were paying attention my hit my top did not carry intimidate it has technician so we have that technician stab beat up so now we're hound doom is effectively much more powerful than my uh, Persian in the last battle because it has a much higher attack set than Persian. And we're still not done yet when it comes to this uh, Houndoom setup because my opponent cannot touch me. He has Water Spout and Origin Pulse, which means he most likely doesn't carry Skull, so I should be safe here and going for Wide Guard again. And my opponent switches out with Ground Down, realizing it can't touch me with the Ground Down. So I'm going to go for Wide Guard one more time. And now we're going to go for the Z move here into my. Uh, Houndoom because we are actually packing the Normalium Z move, the same Z move we were using with Ambipom. We're gonna go for the Z laser focus. We have six guaranteed crits with Technician Stab Beat Up. And my opponent has Magirna here, and I'm like, this is the perfect target for this Houndoom right now because he thinks since, you know, the rain's up, I can't touch this to Magirna, but we're gonna go for Helping Hand as well. So we have Helping Hand, Technician, Stab, plus one, guaranteed to crit, beat up. And this is just going to eviscerate this Magirna. This Magirna is very, very bulky. Magirna is a very bulky Pokemon, but this Magirna stands no chance. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the maximum amount of damage you can do with beat up. Down goes Magirna to plus one, guaranteed crit, technician, stab beat up. Which is really, really strong, by the way. And now my opponent's gonna go for Thunder into my Hitmontop. Because Hitmontop has been pissing him off with the Wide Guard. I can definitely understand why he Thunder there. He's gonna paralyze me, which kind of stinks because that means the Hitmontop is no longer included in the beat up. Because if you're status or fainted, you, your beat up just doesn't happen. We're gonna eat our Iron Poppy Berry. It's now my opponent's gonna bring out the Rayquaza. And Rayquaza, or Rayquaza, I don't know how you pronounce that Pokemon's name, is uh, really threatening. And uh, Mega Rayquaza is actually really frustrating. Not because it's super broken or anything, but just because, guys, its ability hurts my eyeballs. Like, this ability, it wasn't that bad in Oras, but for some reason, they made the Delta Stream. Like, look, look at this. Like, it hurts. It hurts my eyes. Like, oh my god. Uh, we gotta kill this Rayquaza immediately. So we're gonna protect our Houndoom here because we don't want to die this turn. I'm just gonna Mach Punch Kyogre for some chip damage. This is just a pretty nice chunk of damage because I am Technician. And now he's going to drag into Descent my Hitmontop, which will indeed knock me out. So down goes my Hitmontop, which is fine because I did not need Hitmontop for anything else since now we're paralyzed, so the beat up's not even like that important. We got Technician on Houndoom already. Down goes Hitmontop, which is fine. Because now I can actually bring out. Oh, fuck. Okay, so it turns on over yet. I'm um, just gonna Origin Pulse be able to protect ourselves. As now I'm gonna bring out my skill yourself, the Kartana. Now I'm actually focused on my Kartana, so I'm not too fearful of what my opponent's gonna do here. I'm gonna go for Smart Strike into Rayquaza just because I thought it would kill at minus one, but I underestimated Mega Rayquaza. Is now he's gonna V create my Kartana. And it's going to do a lot. It's going to annihilate you. We are packing the Focus Sash instead of Choice Scarf in this game because Kartana with Focus Sash and VGC earn doubles in general is pretty nice. And uh, now we're going to go for the uh, beat up here. Sorry, I had to wait for my turn. going to go for beat up into Kyogre. We no longer have Helping Hand or the Guaranteed Crits, but five beat ups will be more than enough to knock out Kyogre with the stab technician plus one attack beat up so it's very 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 powerful right now my opponent's gonna bring in the ground down here finally we're gonna get rid of this damn delta stream so the desolate land's gonna activate so now it is now sunny we can actually look at the gameplay without you know cringing actually never mind that 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 didn't change but like hey now it doesn't hurt to watch my wait no, never mind it hurts to watch my videos okay never mind at least the delta stream's gone and now we're gonna bring in doomsday my Evolto, anticipating the potential e-speed as he does carry the e-speed so we're able to bring in your Voltal here, get Dark Aura, avoid the KO on Kartana, so we still have five hits on this beat up. And so I can just go for beat up here into the ground on. Hopefully we can knock this thing out. However, ground on has very high base defense. It's able to live this beat up just barely. 
and now he's going to miss the precipice blades um very lucky on my part um obviously it didn't matter because i still had five other pokemon left but whatever now we're just gonna go for the sky attack with yavoltal because you know xerneas isn't the only mom that can run power herb we got power herb sky attack yavoltal <laughs> but we missed that which means houndoom actually does get the ko on ground down which is pretty funny so ground on gets knocked out by beat up and we're able to defeat my opponent thanks to technician stab beat up houndoom with all that support so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video we got to showcase how much damage beat up can actually do if you have the right team set up and everything like that so hopefully this gives you guys a little more respect to the move beat up but beat up is honestly such a fun move to try out and use it was really fun to mess around with it and if you guys were motivated or inspired by this video i'll leave a link to all of the teams i used in this video in the description and a pokey paste if you are interested in that and if you are going to use this on the ladder use the weavile team okay i climbed to the mid 1800s on the showdown ladder with that team and i'm not lying i'm not just like claiming that i do have receipts for that and yeah it was a long climb battles aren't easy you have to play out of your mind to win but like if you can play this team aggressively and play it properly using retrogus eject button properly to like switch and weave out for free this team just like destroys some people destroys some matchups and it just auto loses in other matchups like rain and like triple fairy spam you can't really win against those teams but like pokemon's a game where you get punished for having fun you just gotta deal with that and accept sometimes like you just gotta live or die by your team and that's just how i that's how i roll when i play this game but yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you guys enjoyed this video and really want to support my channel and what i do here on youtube the best way of doing so is leaving a like on the video actually that's not true that's the best way of showing your support towards my channel is disabling your ad blocker and watching all of my ads 30 times actually that's not true the best way of showing support towards my channel is just donating me a million dollars so if you can donate me a million dollars you are a true fan of my content <laughs> i'm just joking about that i wouldn't ask that of any of you guys but like low-key if there's any like sugar dads who want to help me out financially i'll leave a link to my stream labs in the description wink wink nudge nudge <laughs> but like real talk youtube does not pay the bills and your bitch is struggling badly which is why there hasn't been many videos but i'm um, back on a more positive note the question of the day is going to be well since y'all didn't answer my last question of the day i got like two answers the question of the day for this video is did you watch till the end of the video did you watch till the end of the video if you did be sure to comment leave a comment saying incinivor makes me beat up my meat now there's a reasoning why i'm asking you to comment this because i get comments all the time saying oh my god the incinivor in the thumbnail made me jizz my pants oh my god i touched myself to your thumbnails i touched myself to incinivor but like if you leave a comment on this video saying that there is no incinivor in this video so the furries and other people will be like yo where's the incinivor man i don't see no incinivor and everyone will be super confused how are you pledging yourself to incinivor if there is no incinivor but like the real ones will know why you're commenting that and i will know why you're commenting that only the people at my lunch table and my secret club will be able to understand your comments so be sure to leave a comment saying that you beat up your meat to incinivore if you did watch till the end of the video and oh my god can you imagine if incinivore got beat up instead of houndoom oh my god i would be in heaven because incinivore beating me up mm. Now y'all are probably thinking, yo Weedle, are you like a furry or something? And the answer to that question, that's a no. I am not a furry, though I have no issues with furries. Some people like bash on them and call them like not people like mentally ill, but like just because someone has a weird kink doesn't mean they're like mentally ill or weird. Okay, if you want someone who's mentally ill, look no further than me. <gasps> but like just because you like looking at like muscular pictures of dogs or like, okay, now that I say it out loud, it is a little weird, but I'm not gonna judge you for it. There's some people who like getting peed on and they get off to that. And there's some people who like licking feet. Now that's much more gross than like getting off to like pictures of buff and Cinderwar, okay? So the answer to that question, no, I am not a furry. However, if Incineroar needs some favors done for him. Oh yes, daddy. You already know how much he's done for me. So I gotta return the favor, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that is gonna be the question of the day. I answered the question many people have. Is Weedle Twin Needle a fairy? Now tune in for next episode where I answer, what is Weedle Twin Needle's gender? That is a very difficult question. I understand how so many people have trouble with that. I will reveal that in the next video. But uh, y'all probably think I'm so mentally ill and have problems. And I do, I am, I'm both of those. If you look up mentally ill in the dictionary, my face will pop up. <laughs>
<laughs> but yeah, thank y'all so much for watching till the end of the video. The fact that there's people out there who have watched like 40 plus minutes of me like talking and being stupid is just like so heartwarming. It's beyond heartwarming. So I love y'all very, very much. And I apologize for my lack of uploads, but like I've been working so hard and trying to work on my mental health and trying to better myself and get myself out of this hole I'm in that YouTube and Pokemon has not been my focus. And hopefully you guys understand that and will stay with me. And the fact that there's people who will stay with me and be patient enough and wait for my next video is honestly so heartwarming. I love you. I love you all. But yeah, I'm rambling at this point. Y'all have probably have better things to do than to hear me ramble. Thank y'all all so much for watching till the end of the video. I love you very, 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 very much. I can't say that enough. And I'll check you guys in my next video.